In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, <clears throat> are by no means least among the pe rulers of Judah. Far from you shall come a ruler who is the shepherd to my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time that the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that had se they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. <clears throat> you may be seated. It's my turn to say it now. Happy Epiphany. <laughs> Today is the day that the church has set aside to celebrate the light of Christ. And in that, we also celebrate the Magi going from the east to meet the new Christ child. But in order to understand this journey that the Magi took and why it was so significant, we have to understand a little more about who these Magi were. I don't know about you, but I always think of the king, the children's nativity with the kings and the crooked crowns. And well, I learned a little something this year. They weren't kings. In fact, it's probably more likely that these magi were astrologers or religious leaders in the sense of magicians or incantations or dream interpreters. In fact, they probably didn't believe in one God. They didn't follow the Jewish scriptures. They were not themselves Jewish, but they had been influenced by the Jewish scriptures. They would have been familiar with the idea of a Messiah that would come and seize power and bring peace. And then when they worshiped and bowed down to Jesus, they probably weren't worshiping the God in flesh, in their minds, they were worshiping a king or a political leader. And then, of course, you've got the distance that they traveled. They traveled from Persia, which is modern-day Iraq, into Jerusalem. And that was just to meet Herod. That doesn't, that's not including the trip from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. So you've got all of these things working, and then on top of all of that distance, it probably was not the safest of roads to take for them. It was probably a very dangerous trip. And then other than the fact that they didn't go back to Herod as he had ordered them, we don't know much about what happened after they left Jesus. Did they decide to turn away from worshiping many gods? Did they figure out that the child they just met was the son of God, the Messiah that the Jews had been waiting for? And did they know that that one journey could possibly change their lives? Well, through the story, we see many examples of how, God, how far God is willing to go to reach God's people. The Magi 
not Jews were sent to Jesus. Maybe this is Matthew's way and God's way of telling us that this Messiah was not just for the Jews, that this Messiah was the Messiah for all nations, for all peoples. And then we see what happens when God goes to work. In the Magi, with the Magi, the journey that they took was probably an unexpected one. Studying the stars was part of ordinary life for them. So it was possible that they were used to just kind of seeing a star rise and following it. And in their tradition, stars rising meant the birth of a king. So that, that was common for them. But what they found over where, when the star had stopped was probably uncommon. What they found was a common house. Do you think that they really expected the king of the Jews to come from that common house? And from Bethlehem, of all places? Because, of course, you know that nothing good can come out of Bethlehem. Well, I don't think that the journey that the Magi found themselves on is much different from our daily journey. At our baptism, we are marked and sealed with the cross of Christ forever. The claim that God has on us is our calling. It is a calling to be part of the world. It is a calling to be God's hands and feet in the world. And it is a calling to let our light so shine that others will see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. And if that wording sounds familiar, it's because it comes right out of the baptismal service that we say when we baptize. But we know that living out this baptismal calling, following God, walking this journey, means that our lives often take unexpected twists and turns, and we may end up in places we never expected to find things that we never knew about, or do things we never dreamed possible. It also means that the road is not always smooth and easy. As I have been living my life, I know that my baptism and the call that God has given me has taken me on a journey that I never expected nor could have dreamed about. As a junior in high school, I had it all planned out. I was going to graduate from high school, go to Valparaiso University, about 45 minutes away from home, graduate there with some sort of degree in either religion or psychology or something, a conglomeration of the two. And then after that, I was going to go to seminary, probably Chicago because it was about an hour away from home so I could still be with family and be a part of my church community and see all of my friends. And then after that, I was going to go on internship, probably Indianapolis, about two hours away from home, you know, so I can still be a part of that community and still see my family and friends when I wanted to, but go to church too, be in a church. And then I was going to graduate and I was going to get a call somewhere in Indiana, maybe Michigan, pretty close to home though, but you know, that works out. Yeah, that worked. (laughs) Actually, that all changed. I attended a seminary sampler program at Trinity Lutheran Seminary, which is a three-week experience for high schoolers to get a taste of what ministry may be like and maybe see what seminary may be like and maybe see what jobs outside of pastoral jobs would be like. And then we went to Wittenberg University. Well, that visit right there changed everything. I ended up graduating from high school, so I stuck with that plan. I attended Wittenberg, four hours away from home, joined the choir, and traveled to places like New York and Connecticut, Washington, D.C., Minneapolis, and several places in California and Arizona. I even spent some time in Georgia, and then was given the opportunity to attend two church-wide assemblies, serve on the Senate Council, and then I moved to Trinity Lutheran Seminary, five hours away from home in Columbus, Ohio, and then ended up here for internship, 20 hours away from home. 
My plan was similar, but not exact. And while these experiences have been fun and educational and well worth it, they have not come without their challenges. Being far away from home, getting to know new people and new cultures, having new experiences, those weren't easy. But what God has called me to and where I have been are wonderful things. Things I never would have imagined and things that I couldn't imagine that my baptism would call me to. Experiences that I've had and places I've been are all a part of that calling. Now I bet some of you could relate to that maybe just a little bit. How many of you looking back on your life right now could have expected and did expect where you would be at this exact moment. How many of you would have expected to be in San Antonio? Would you have expected to be in the job that you're currently in? Would you have expected to have all of the experiences that you've had, meet the people that you've met, and do the things you've done? Was it a one-day process? My guess is probably not. In my limited experience, I've kind of learned that this baptismal thing is not a one-day process. It's a lifelong thing. The journey that the Magi took was definitely not a one-day thing. It was a lifelong journey, but it was, a, it was not a one-day journey. And neither is the journey that God calls us through through our baptism. Now, in our tradition, baptism happens only once. But that's only the beginning of the journey. The baptismal call is a lifelong journey, and that happens in our daily life. And one of the ways we live out this calling is through our vocation, a calling by God. Now, this isn't a word that is just used for the pastor types and the church leader types. This is a word that we use for everyone. As the ELCA states on their website, we all have a calling, a vocation, to follow Christ's example, living a life of meaning and purpose in service to the common good, to work every day in what we say and do, to share God's boundless love with the world. Now, I think the beginning of the new year is a great time to kind of sit back and reflect on what you've done and where you've been, but it's also a wonderful time to look ahead. I bet some of you have even sat down to start thinking and planning about the new year ahead and what it may bring. But perhaps this would also be a good time to think about the ways that God is calling you to journey with God and God's people throughout the year. Maybe it's getting involved in a new ministry of the church. Maybe it's getting involved in the ministry of a church in a new way. Maybe it's attending one of the new Bible studies or Sunday school classes. Or maybe it's serving in the community in ways you've never expected. Or maybe you just don't know yet. But one thing out of all of these uncertainties that we know is that God continues to reach out to us in new and unexpected ways, leading and calling us to new and unexpected journeys. Are you ready for the ride? And are you ready to let your light so shine that others may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven? Amen.